is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is, locked and loaded. What do you think about my MILF plan this weekend? Do we do we load? <laughs> do we I'm, I'm not sure. with MILFs? Does does that help or hurt Zach Wilson? Well, it clearly, it clearly, perhaps it helps him in the long run, hurts him in the short run. I, I like if you're facing Zach Wilson, um, you've are like that's already a bit of a victory. Uh, okay. If you if you need to further sabotage Zach Wilson, that yeah. is a that is a pretty serious concern, but it couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Um, I mean, gives we're, a, we're, we're, we're Dolphins fans. We need all the help we can possibly get. So, you know, if the MILF community wants to help us out, we would really appreciate there's, the MILF There's probably community. a Dolphins Cheerleader Alumni Association that you just tap right into, right? Right, exactly. And then he's going to want to tap into that. So that's kind <laughs> of the idea, you know? Sir, wants to tap words. that app, as, uh, <laughs> as they used to say. And, uh, and one of our sponsors uh, called Liquor Split. Tap that app. So I'm sure they want to tap that app uh, that's what it's a very different want. variety of fantasy football that we ventured into already right? yes. the first yes minute. it is yes it is and if you have any of those kind of fantasy questions also for andy barons you can send it in for him it's not a problem you know uh do you Scott go with those. do you go with the, those. do you go with the toyota babe or do you go with lily from at&t <laughs> i'm gonna need some time to consider that uh i've i've not really probably Oh man, that's a, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Same kind of same kind of relative charm. I'm going um, Lily. I'm going Lily all the way. I'm a I'm a Milt Melania fan. <laughs> no, that's her, by that, the way. That's her, that's her Instagram uh, uh, handle, Milt Melania. Well, you oh, see, you've done research. I've done I've done no research. I'm, in I'm this, a, I'm so a Lily uh, yeah. from AT and T fan. I think I think she's. Uh, I think she's an under the radar hottie, actually. Well, this is good buzz marketing for AT and T. Not that they. Yes, it, it is. Yes, AT and T. You guys, what you know, want to sponsor us? Let's go. We we need a, a <laughs> cell phone carrier. We don't have one on the uh, on the platform, so why not, man? Twenty million downloads. Let's go. We get we're getting it out to people. All right, all right. So let's get let's get into a little week eighteen action, which is really really weird and. Just uh, it's it's one of those where if you're in week 18, you, um, you know, you're you're uh, you're really gambling. Let's just say <laughs> I, I will say this season, it, it does seem like we're going to be heading into week 18 with the best team still having something to play for. Right. Like this weird Bills, eagle Bills situation. To, yeah. Yeah, Bills and yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, Bills got to Bills got to win out. Chiefs got to win out. The Bengals still care as of this moment, um, so that's a win. Obviously, the Eagles have to win next week in order to in order to lock up uh, home field throughout the NFC. Um, I think the only teams that are at risk of obviously playing like bench guys because they've locked up everything they can or that are the Giants. And Brian Bible said immediately after the game that they would not rest starters. I don't. I, I don't know that that seems wise, right? Like I would, I would certainly play Matt Breida over Saquon Barkley. I would, I would play Tyrod. I, I wouldn't risk Daniel Jones getting injured in a game like that, but whatever. I mean, it is an important game for the Eagles. And then I don't, I don't think the Bucks can improve their position, right? They're kind of locked in, um, but there's nobody, there, there are no like, you know, Bucks on the bench that you're going to care about. So I don't know that you can really do anything with that. It's not like it's a blow up spot for any for any reserve Tampa Bay players. No, I'm with you there. Uh, by the way, if you got questions, send them in right now on the YouTube chat board. Of course, you can also send them in through super chat. A lot easier to uh, to uh, to uh, see, and of course on Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show, and on Twitter at Big O Show. That's another way that you can also send it in. So if you got some questions, send them in. Tyler Algiers, is that a guy we count on in week 18? Yeah, that guy looked great. Um again, he's got he's got Tampa Bay this coming week, but but with the Bucks not having anything to play for, I don't know that we'll exactly see, you know, the the best version of that defense or offense. 
Um, Algier looks phenomenal. In fact, um, one of the, one of the best plays that he had, uh, on Sunday was negated by penalty, had another situation, I believe where, um, you know, he, he elected not to score a touchdown for game situations, right? Like it could have really been a blow up game for him. He looks outstanding to me. And, um, even though Cordero Patterson remains heavily involved, all they want to do is run the football. So um, there's there's carries enough there. There's touches enough there for both guys to remain fantasy factors. I, I just think this is, you know, this is as good as as anyone could have reasonably have expected Tyler Algier to look. I think I think he's been I think he's been fantastic. All right. A, a team still playing for something. You tell me, James Cook. What do you do? He's 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 available in some leagues. Is that worth a gamble right now? Sure. Um, now, as to whether you know if you're actually in a fantasy championship, if you're if you're seriously desperate for <laughs> for a starting running back, like I don't know saying. that you'll actually be rolling. Like these are the best, the best teams theoretically that are in action right now. So I, I'm just I don't want to find some nuggets for them deep, just in case they have any. Yeah, injuries. yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't like, mean to. I, yeah, I don't. I don't mean to imply that uh, you, you know he's entirely useless because certainly there's there's guys out there in in really deep leagues. But he's been an exciting player. He's had some weirdly this year. He's had some actually some bad moments as a receiver where he's not exactly like finishing a route the way Josh Allen thinks he will uh, thinks he's going to. But he's also had some great improvisational moments with Josh Allen, um, and he's had some nice moments on the ground too. So. Obviously, they're leaning into him and Devin Singletary right now. Uh, you know, I, I feel like each week sort of rewrites the the fantasy scouting report on James Cook. So we'll see what we get tonight. But he's been super promising. And obviously, the late season usage has been outstanding. So if you're gambling and gambling for a flex, does do the Cowboys have much to play for next week? I, the Cowboys, surprisingly enough, are still alive for for everything, right? Like, I think they have a path to the one seed. They have a path to, to the division. It all hinges on the Eagles losing. And I don't know that the Eagles are going to lose if they actually get Jalen Hurts back. But um, they, they do technically have a fair amount to play for. Um, so I would think that we might see the return of Tony Pollard. That would be exciting. Obviously, Dak has been Dak's been a little up and down, but uh, his his best moments have been quite good. So I think you're firing up all Cowboys for sure. Yeah, no. Well, that's why I'm saying. But uh, will they will they actually go with Malik? Will they use him at all? Yeah, no. I'd be I'd be pretty surprised by that. Depending on Pollard's health, right? Like may, maybe they just say we're gonna we're we just want to get Tony Pollard to the postseason. We think that that Malik and and Zeke are good enough to you know get it done in in week 18. We'll we'll see. But that that's entirely contingent on Pollard's practice reports. Right, and that's why. Okay, so not something. I mean, I personally would not use this kid at all in a week 18 matchup, but I don't know if you're in a in a 20 or 16 team league and, you know, yeah. the talent is uh, really thin and those kind of things. All right. So is there a receiver that you like out of the waiver wire that could be somebody that you would use? Yeah, I think um, I'll give you three guys who are available in a majority of Yahoo leagues right now, all of whom are pretty interesting. The first is uh, is Traylon Burks. Uh, I thought he looked great this pet like in a dog of a game on Thursday night. Man, another another winner for for Prime Video, right? Um, just an absolute dog of a game between the Cowboys and Titans. Uh, Traylon Burks was a was a bright spot. Really looked good, um, and he's healthy right now. It seemed like with Josh Dobbs at quarterback, they're actually they're actually running a, a normal NFL offense in terms of <laughs> you know run pass mix. Um, so that was good to see. So there's plenty of targets available to him. So I, I thought Traylon Burks was pretty interesting and somebody that you can definitely play against Jacksonville in Week 18. Jacksonville's been a pretty leaky pass defense all year. Um, assuming the Giants are really going to roll out regulars, uh, I think I think Richie James is super interesting. Like. He saw double digit targets a couple of weeks ago, had 90 receiving yards and then followed it with, you know, 70 plus yards and uh, and a touchdown this past week. Obviously, has great rapport with Daniel Jones. He's getting those slot targets. So a lot of them are easy if you're in any sort of PPR format. I think he's interesting. And then uh, the final name that I would throw out there as being relatively interesting is Kadarius Tony. He's not he's not playing a ton. Like he's not on the field as often as MVS or like Justin Watson or Juju. Um, but they're kind of slotting him into some of this McCole Hardman usage, like McCole Hardman, before he went down to injury, 
he had five touchdowns in three games. Right. And he was a, he was doing some of the, you know, some of the Jarek McKinnon touches, some of the, you know, when they get in goal to go situations, it was, he, he was becoming a player of interest and they were doing a little bit of that with Kadarius Tony as well. He's also coming off game with four targets, caught them all 71 yards, looked really good, looked electric out there. So when Kadarius Tony is healthy, He's he's the sort of player that you slot in for fantasy. Like maybe if you think you're an underdog and you need somebody who can just like break a big play and you're looking for upside and that's it. And you can live with the idea that the downside of a player is like two catches for 18 yards. Um, but but you want a home run threat. Um, that's that's Kadarius Tony. Tight ends. Anybody you would take a chance on. The only the only guy I thought that really popped in in week 17 was Trey McBride um, and didn't didn't see that coming because they haven't really been leaning on Trey McBride. He was, I thought, the best tight end in his draft class. I thought he was a really exciting rookie who just landed in a terrible spot behind Zach Ertz. Right. And and really with a team that hasn't overused its tight end historically. Um, but he looked great, saw 10 targets, found the end zone. Um, excellent excellent game from McBride and he's a real talent too. And it sounded like from the, from the broadcast that, uh, David Blau, the guy who was at quarterback for Arizona this past week, it's a different guy every week for them now, um, had, had actually been raving about Trey McBride throughout the week. So that was his usage was planned. Um, and they really like him and he does seem like somebody who's probably gonna, who's probably gonna follow up a big week with another big game. Who's the guy you want to stay away from? That might be a big name, and you would uh, suggest to folks, yeah, I'm afraid of this matchup for this person. Might not play, might not give uh, a lot. Maybe their season's kind of done. Who are you worried about? Yeah, I, I'll say I'll just reiterate again that I'm I'm a little bit worried about what the what the Giants and uh, what the Bucks elect to do this this coming right. week because if they're playoff teams that can't improve their position. Um, I, again, I know Brian Dable said after the game that he would play all his guys. It just seems negligent and unwise to, to risk it with Saquon Barkley. Like how, I mean, that would just be, uh, An there's, injury a, there's a huge guy. <laughs> yeah. There's a huge step down from Saquon to Matt Breida and Matt Breida is fine, but you, you don't want to go into a playoff matchup the following week without all of your best weapons. So I'd be really nervous about particularly Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley making it through that game uh, without getting, without getting pulled. It, it seems much more likely to me that they would each get like a couple series and then would get yanked. And then I wouldn't, you know, it kind of all bets are off. I would think for the bucks. I don't, I don't know why the bucks would roll out regulars. Although the one thing I will say there is that um, Tom Brady always play like in new England, Tom Brady always played that final game of the season after they'd clinched everything they could clinch. Um, he, he, I don't know if it was him. I don't know if it was Belichick, but they always chose to to roll him out there with the regular offense and and sort of stay in rhythm. So that is that is definitely a possibility as well. All right, Miami obviously going into this game, they will have uh, the youngin, their their third quarterback, Skylar Thompson, playing. How do you handle the Tyreek and Waddle situation with the third stringer and the Jets have a good defense? Yeah, it's rough because you can't. Well, you, you know, Tyreek especially is the sort of player that you can't. There's there's no corner that can just like lock him up. He's too he's too damn fast. He's he's strong. He's he's too fast. It's like it's hard to do the things. You know, you think about what what the Packers were able to do to to Justin Jefferson this week. They got really physical with him. I don't know. It's it's almost like you never see that stuff work with Tyreek because at some point he can just run away from you. Um, and he's also he's also really strong and tough to jam. Um, However, I would have liked to see Thompson go downfield a little bit more, right? Like all those targets to Raheem Mostert, all these short range things, all this, all this work to Gusecki, um, that wasn't great. Like I, I like this offense uh, and I'm sure you guys do as well when it's, when it's looking downfield to Waddle and Tyreek. So I worry that's not going to be there to this, to the same extent. Um, that, that, lack of that, trust. I think, I don't think, yeah. I don't think they yeah. trust the two guys compared to how much they trust Tua. To find, and and I think there's also a when you watch them play, like you immediately can tell that there's a difference between the way Tua sees it quickly compared to those guys. It's yeah. almost like they need to almost read and react 
whereas Tua has more anticipatory skills to to his game. And and so I think that they're obviously more comfortable with him, but Skyler has the ability. Uh, where Skyler was at his best, if you noticed, well, I don't know if you were watching that the, the game, why would you watch it? But when he started scrambling around and then buying some time, that's when, with all that speed out there, that's all of a sudden, look how Gesicki scored, dude. Because they're they're actually yeah. using him now the last two weeks. That's the yeah. reason. Um, unfortunately, nobody got to the fantasy playoffs with Mike Gasecki, and everybody got there with Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. And so, so like we need those guys. Um, and th they manufacture so many fun touches for Tyreek that I guess I worry a little bit less about him than I do about Jalen Waddle. That's um, what I was gonna ask you because I almost feel like if you have another option, like some of the guys we talked about or somebody else that you've been benching, he almost might be a better option than Waddle. I can see Tyreek because they use him yeah. in so many different ways. You know what I mean? So he has ways of scoring. Hell, we saw him pick up a fumble this year and run it for a touchdown. Right, right. You know what I mean? So so it, it's just stupid. His talent is just so ridiculous. But I don't know yeah, if I would – I don't know if I would start Waddle this week, to be quite honest. No, I, I think I think that's a, a much more valid call. I, I think the way that I'm gonna and I haven't actually ranked for week 18 yet. It's it's such a it's such a chore to rank for week 18, right? Because you know it's only a handful of people that are, that have to care about it, and it's such a the week is just ruled by chaos um, because so many teams bench so many guys. Um, but I'm gonna have I'm gonna still have Tyreek as like a fringe top 10 guy but i think waddle might be outside my top 20 which hasn't happened basically all season it's been a really long time since i've had him outside the top 20 but i, I you know it's one of those situations where i just don't think that thompson is going to support two startable fantasy wide receivers and i would expect waddle to be the out odd man out i gotta tell you something not that you would use him but i like your sicky this week to pick up a touchdown for you if, they, you're, in a um, if you're in a touchdown league Young quarterbacks or rookie quarterbacks or whatever, running backs and tight ends are the safest throws. And I've only made it through like the about the first third of that game so far, but they were working Sherfield again too, right? Like yeah, 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 yeah. But you'll see you'll see Kasiki get in the mix, and I think he will get in the mix again this week and possibly maybe even for a touchdown. Now, again, not to use him this week. I would not use anybody except Tyreek on the Dolphins offense. Yeah, I wouldn't I even use you, you know, I, I unless you have no other choice. I mean, unless you're, you know, your backup receivers are not that good, then you've got to go with Waddle. But if you have a guy that's good and is going to get, you know, like um, you just mentioned the Florida kid. What's Tony, the name of? Yeah, Kadarius Tony. Tony. Yeah. What would you use? Would you use Kadarius Tony or Jalen Waddle this week? Oh, man. Well, that's a – that's one where I would still want Waddle because Waddle at least is on the field. Like Kadarius, the other thing with Kadarius Tony is you know that his snaps are going to be in the teens. It's it's just that they target him about a quarter of the time when he's actually on the field. Um, oh. I don't I don't think I could pull the trigger there. Um, there are some like I've routinely been you know I have a league where I'd been benching you know Juju Smith Schuster for for Waddle. I think I probably played Juju this week. Okay. I have a league where I've go. toggled back and forth between Keenan Allen and Jalen Waddle, and I'm I'm sure that I would play Keenan Allen this week. Yep. All right, what else you got going on in sports group? Sports group at uh, Yahoo in our sports group fantasy football zone. What do you got going on in Yahoo so folks can check you out? Yeah, we will have week 18 rankings live on Tuesday. I will have the final pickups column of the year also available on Tuesday morning. And we're continuing the podcast. It's the Yahoo Fantasy Football Forecast. About to record that in uh, in about four or five minutes here. All right. And then uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll uh, get you ready for the playoffs. So if there are playoffs fantasy for you, daily fantasy games uh, that are going to go on throughout the playoffs, we will also keep you updated on that and then moving on uh we hope to cover the draft and all the additions and all that so for you keeper in dynasty leagues this segment will continue and will build up through the off season so we'll get into we'll we'll get into in depth into building fantasy rosters now throughout the off season which is something that normally is not done but we will Love do it. that here yeah yeah and talk nfl draft which of course everybody loves to talk you know nfl draft andy as always happy new year my friend thank you uh may the uh, big win be yours if you're in uh, any super <laughs> how many super bowls did you make it this year um 
I, I had, I, it was basically, it was a bloodbath in the quarterfinals for me, but I made it to three. It looks like I'm going to win three. Um, I just need wow. Jamar Chase not to do anything freakish tonight. Like he can have a great game, but he can't have like a great, great game. You know what I'm saying? So as long as he remains a little bit under control, I think I'm good there. You don't want a 200 yard game is what you're saying. Can't have okay. it. We can't have it. We can't have 200 can't have yards and two touchdowns. There you go. There you go. All right, Andy. Good stuff as always, my brother. We'll catch up next week, my friend. Appreciate you. Later, Big O. You got it. Follow him on Twitter at Andy Barons and catch his work there at Yahoo Fantasy. So the talk will kind of change next week. It'll gear more to daily fantasy, and then we'll start to, because obviously the playoffs is really more for daily fantasy than anything else. So any of you that play daily fantasy or What's that other game that I play? Um, what's that thing called? Underdog, right? They've got that stuff. You know, you'll you'll be able to. You know, we'll we'll give you some of the angles for that kind of stuff uh, coming up, and then we'll carry you throughout the off season. Looking forward to it. It's gonna. I think this is the kind of segment that's gonna keep growing and growing and growing because fantasy players are gonna find out this is a hardcore segment. And and draft and NFL fans will kind of like it too because there'll be a lot of NFL talk, you know, involved. So it'll be a lot of more deeper football talk that we'll get into with Andy and Scott over the next couple of months, which will be a lot of fun. There you go. That's your sports grill fantasy football zone.